major hurricane by tonight. The top winds now were up to 105 miles per hour, so it is a Category 2. Right now, it's over the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean, but this is the very latest forecast track that has just come in from the National Hurricane Center, and the track has not changed too much. So by Thursday morning, should be looking at a Category 4 hurricane as it approaches the coast. Of course, swells will be on the increase, and storm surge, of course, is going to be a real problem with the system of this magnitude. Looks like it would make landfall very late Thursday night or early Friday. On this track, it would make landfall very close to Wilmington, but there's a margin of error. It's going to go to the right or to the left of the track. It most likely will not follow that exact track. So the South Carolina coast is still in play, and it could go as far east as Hatteras as well. Of course, the closer that comes to us, the better the chances we have of some impacts here at home. So there's a look at where it is right now. Again, further strengthening is likely during the day today. You can already see an eye trying to develop there. Those dark reds and purples indicating the higher cloud tops and the thunderstorms developing around that center of circulation. And that's going to help it to continue to strengthen during the day today. Meantime, here at home, lots of tropical air in place. That's going to mean a good chance for showers and a couple of storms, especially later today. Julie? Thanks so much, Christy. Well, preparations are already underway across the Carolinas with Hurricane Florence barreling towards the East Coast. Governor Henry McMaster has already declared a state of emergency in mm -hmm. South Carolina. Christine Scarpelli live this morning at the Emergency Operations Center in Columbia. Christine. Yeah, guys, good morning. That means this place can go to work, right? Definitely preparing for that powerful storm if it is to hit our coast, especially here in South Carolina. And that just means getting equipment and personnel all set and ready to go. So exactly what does that look like? Well, today they're expecting a FEMA officer right here to arrive as well as the incident management assistance team here today. And then about 125 or so buses headed to Orangeburg. Those preparing to move evacuees if necessary as well as other personnel and equipment and then communications. That's something thing people don't often think of. You know, between North and South Carolina, resources can be shared like sandbags, generators, depending on where that storm hits. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what the governor had to say. Whatever happens, we're going to have a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Even if uh, the hurricane goes farther north and is anticipated in, in this graphic, we still have a lot of water and a lot of wind. So what that means is we need to be prepared. Yes, yeah, certainly. And that looks like something different to everybody. That might mean getting extra resources for you or finding a place to go if it gets pretty bad as far as flooding goes, possibly losing power. The governor urges you, remember Hurricane Irma as well as Matthew before that. Think about the supplies and resources you didn't have and go ahead and get those ahead of time. And then, of course, guys, you know we always talk about the app. 7 News app is going to bring you the latest as far as weather updates, but also plenty of information on there. SC emd.org now in emergency mode so that gives you access to a whole new list of information hey we'll bring you the latest from right here this morning we're told not too much happening we'll until noon or so guys we'll send it back to you all right christine and we'll be there all week thank you well coastal south carolina cities are trying to stock up ahead of hurricane florence on sunday many stores in myrtle beach already running out of supplies including water Employees at the Lowe's there say things like tarps, roof patches, and propane tanks are also flying off the shelves. The shortage is forcing people there to make adjustments. Now yeah, we're looking for water. Um, we've been to Walmart and the shelves are clear. And then we stopped at Walgreens, the shelves were clear. And so we decided we'd bypass the water and come to Lowe's and get batteries. Horry County, along with other coastal counties, are open for business today, but most are operating on OpCon 3, and that means a disaster or emergency situation is likely or imminent. 505, the story is much the same in North Carolina, which is in the directive path of Florence right now. A low store in Raleigh got a delivery of 200 generators yesterday, but they were all gone by the dinner hour. Store managers think lots of people are remembering Hurricane Matthew in 2016 that left some 600,000 power outages in the state. Last time there was hurricane come through, didn't have any power, ice storms. It's time to have something to like, have at least a little bit of power, keep what's going on, produce a little heat, keep some water going because we're on a well pump. We'll get an update from Governor Roy Cooper this morning on preparations for the hurricane. That's happening at 11 
in Raleigh. The hurricane could force evacuations along the coast of both Carolinas. Yeah, and if it does, there's already a plan in place to shelter some of the evacuees in the upstate. 7 News is Tobias Rodriguez live at High Point Academy in Spartanburg to explain. Hi, Tobias. Good morning. That's right. If people do have to evacuate in South Carolina and they want to come to the upstate, this is where they can come in Spartanburg right here at High Point Academy. There is going to be an emergency shelter here ran by the Red Cross. We did speak with school officials and they say that it's going to have 24 hour security from Spartanburg County deputies. They say that it's going to be locked down as well. So students and staff at the school are not going to have access to the shelter and people in the shelter are not going to have access to the school. The school does tell us that this should not interrupt regular school day activities, so this should be a safe, good place for people to come if they're trying to get away from the coast and the hurricane. And the school does have a history of helping people. In 2016, they helped thousands of people get away from Hurricane Matthew. So we will have more information for you as this storm strengthens. Reporting live in Spartanburg, Tobias Rodriguez, 7 News. All right, thanks so much, Tobias. And a